皆様大変お待たせいたしましたこれよりダライ・ラマ法皇と科学者の対話日本からの発信を開始いたします私は司会を担当いたします川島恵子と申しますどうぞよろしくお願いいたしますこの講演は宇宙や生命のより深い理解のためまた世界の諸問題の解決のためにチベット仏教の最高指導者でノーベル平和賞受賞者ダライ・ラマ14世ダライ・ラマ法王14世と日本を代表する科学者たちが共に互いの境界線を越え交わることで今までにない新たな科学の創造の可能性に挑むという趣旨により本日と明日2日間開催いたしますそれでは早速ダライ・ラマ法王をステージにお迎えいたします皆様盛大な拍手でお迎えください少しの時間、マスコミへの撮影タイムとさせていただきます。ではこれよりダライ・ラマ法王によるオープニングスピーチをお願いいたします。Respected senior elder Buddhist brothers and sisters, as well as senior respected scientists and brothers and sisters. <clears throat>、uh, I think this is almost the first time、uh, dialogue. Between Buddhist, so to say, between Buddhist concept or Buddhist thinking and modern scientist, so to say, or concept more seriously. So, indeed, I'm very, very happy、uh, and great honor. To sit with Japanese、uh, well known scientists. So I'm very happy. Now, reason、uh, firstly, since my childhood. Uh, I develop sort of interest about、uh, mechanics.
Uh, actually, I think my first visit to Japan, perhaps I think 60, 1967 or something. So I very much impressed the what what call bullet train, isn't it? Kasa, bullet train, right? Uh, uh, so I immediately you see uh, you see uh, feel uh, what is the sort of the mechanic work inside. So that's why you see since my childhood I have some. Uh, keen interest about this technology thing. Then with science. Uh, firstly, I think about the cosmology, the cosmology, moons and stars. Uh, when I was in, t in Tibet, uh, usually, you see, we have so the view, moon have its own uh, light, more cooler nature of light. <laughs> Sun, very strong light, but hot. Moon's light is a little bit sort of cool. Uh, then, uh, one sort of very powerful sort of Telescope, which uh, I think Thirteen Dalai Lama received from some, I think, the guest, sorry, I think some some foreign visitors, I think. You see, he kept, uh, uh, he kept, you see, that uh, very very strong sort of t telescope. So I used to use this telescope during night to moon. Then I found, you see, there, there are, you see, some, something like rock mountains. At the shade, uh, the, I see, the early night, is the sun this side. So shade, you see, come other side. Uh, and then one was the Dawadus, Kasa, what do you call? Ka. Oh, Ka. Creator survey. Creator, uh, you see the western side shadow there, east side no shadow. So ka creator, so it is very clear. Moon, uh, no light, but light only from sun. Clear. So I think uh, fifty. 1950, I think 56, 57, around that period. One full moon sort of night. Uh, I arranged my telescope and I invited my two tutor. Uh, I'm quite sure, still believe the moon has its, its own light. <laughs> So I, I show, uh, I, I, I requested so my tutor, please look uh, whether there is light on its sorry, on moon, whether light come from uh, sun. So they, they seriously so they watch and then agree, yes, moon, no light, light come from sun. <laughs> so like that, you see, uh, I have sort of keen interest uh, about the scientific explanation about cosmology, these things. And then also biology. Uh, uh, and then physics, like particularly like quantum physics. So these are the main sort of what's the field where I have so keen interest. Uh, so after we came to India, become refugee, uh, the new opportunity is in meeting with uh, 
scientist, well-known scientist. Then gradually, uh, now for example, the quantum physicist, the late David Bohm, uh, and then another, the late uh, von Wesecke, German. From these two, great physicists. Uh, actually, I sort of, uh, sorry, not only just interview, but actually I try to uh, learn from these two uh, professors. But I usually see telling uh, uh, these two, two professors, really, I was a wonderful sort of professors. But I, as a student, really hopeless. Reason, while is it, while is it, I listen, their explanation, seems I understand is something. After finishing that lesson, nothing left here. <laughs> so that's why I discovered a wonderful teacher, but hopeless student. <laughs> So then, uh, uh, mainly, you see, the, my personal sort of curiosity is in meeting with scientists. Oh, wonderful. Uh, these scientists, some American, some German, some English, uh, some Indian, like that, they say, I found, oh, there is some kind of spirit of genuine internationalism. Don't concern about what, what nationality, what country. Everybody is focusing their own subject. And then these genuine scientists, their mind very open. Remain skepticism and then open mind, very unbiased. They always look any subject objectively. So these are the factors which I sort of develop attraction like that. So then, forty years ago, uh, uh, I think early. Uh, because uh, early, I think, 60 or early, early 70s, I think. Uh, because you see, I had, you see, I already have sort of serious sort of, uh, interest about this, is the uh, modern science. So then one American lady uh, who married with one Tibetan, uh, she, a Buddhist, following the Tibetan Buddhist, Buddhism. So I just uh, express, or oh, I want to have serious sort of discussion or dialogue with modern scientists. Then she responded to me, or oh, be careful. Science is killer of religious faith. <laughs> she gave me warning. Then I thought, I thought, think, 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 think again, 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 again. Uh, then, Buddhist tradition, particularly Nalanda tradition, uh, is, is very much sort of, sort of emphasize importance of skepticism. Uh, and investigate. Without skept skepticism, uh, no question rise. No question, no investigation. No investigation, you can't find the reality. So investigation, research is very essential in order to learn the reality, in order to know the reality. There's always a gap, appearance and reality. 
So if we just content on the basis of appearance, then we never reach the real reality. We must sort of remain uh, skepticism and then investigate. That's the Nalanda tradition. Very much emphasis on that. They always to say, take one sort of quotation of Buddha's own word. That is, you say, Buddha say, Buddha state, oh my follower, monks or scholars should not accept my teaching out of faith, out of devotion, but rather thorough investigation, experiment. Through that way, once you uh, develop uh, conviction, then follow, then accept my teaching. So the, that's the Buddhism in general, particularly the Nalanda tradition, like Lunsu Pusa, uh, and all these great Nalanda masters, uh, they follow this sort of Buddha's advice. Therefore, they even sort of investigate Buddha's own word. Uh, this Buddha's word, teaching, you cannot accept literally. Because if you accept, you see, this sort of concept and the logic will uh, uh, I say they, uh, that uh, it, it will con contradict with logic, uh, logical approach. So, even Buddha's own word, they usually you see to make it, uh, investigate, and those concept uh, which find logical support, then that we can literally accept. Those uh, point which. Uh, although the script, scripture uh, uh, mentioned, I mean, text, Buddha's own word is mentioned, but if find contradic contradiction with logical research, investigation, then you should not accept you see, that literally. So that's an alternative tradition sort of way of approach. So therefore, I felt no danger. <laughs> uh, no need cautious <laughs> meeting with scientists. Uh, no problem. So then about 30 years, since 30 years, say, uh, I had sort of serious sort of discussion with scientists. Uh, actually, you see, my sort of motivation is merely education. Like that. Result, as a result, we, Buddhist, or say the student of Nalin tradition, or student of Nalin tradition, see useful information from modern scientific sort of finding, uh, in cosmology, or maybe neurobiology, or all these. Uh, uh, in, in these fields. This is very useful information. I think as far as knowledge about matter is concerned, modern science is much uh, developed. Uh, Buddhist science about matter, although the essence, like atom, these things mentioned, but not much developed. Because no instrument. <laughs> in modern scientists, you see, we use instrument. So, uh, so they their knowledge is more precise. So to us, very, very useful to learn from them. One casualty is, is the Buddhist uh, cosmology. Uh, basically, you see, same. The, like Darwinian theory, and also all the phenomena, all sorts of kata, kasual phenomena. I said the physical world is to come from space, or sat from subtle energy. Then you see uh, some kind of evolution. 
becoming more grosser, grosser, grosser. And finally, like this planet. And then also dissolution, right? Dissolution also, you see, the solid dissolve liquid. Liquid dissolve energy. Energy dissolve space. These basically same. Uh, but now you see the particular sort of uh, planet, world, our world. One Abhidhamma Kosha Karika, uh, one Nalanda Master, uh, the Basuban, the younger brother of Arya Asanga. You see, in his writing, uh, mentioned flat, world is flat, and in the center, Mount Miru. <laughs> the sun and the moon, same level, go around Mount Miru. That, that, that's why, you see, we experience day and the night. <laughs> <laughs> now, after learning, you see the uh, modern sort of, how to say, cosmology and, 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 the, and the suns, moons, all these stars. You see, they actually, you see, they measured, uh, actually measured and calculate. So that's really, is it convincing? Therefore, now, I hope I still Buddhist monk, <laughs> but no longer accept, you see, that kind of sort of description. Mount Miru. So that's one casualty <laughs> as a result of uh, learning from scientific sort of explanation about world, about planet, like that. Uh, so sometimes I use it telling Buddhist main purpose of coming Buddha, or main purpose of appearance, uh, appearance, appearance of Buddha not making map of this, this planet, <laughs> but main purpose of Buddha come, come on, on, on this planet and his teaching is for noble truth. How to transform our mind. That's the main purpose. The description of this world, that's minor. Uh, if you see it goes against this scientific finding, no problem. Like that. So, then, in inner world, a world of mind is concerned. Western psychology, compare ancient Indian psychology, the Western psychology is like kindergarten's knowledge. Uh, so, therefore, to the scientist, uh, the Asian sort of ancient Indian sort of psychology, particularly Buddhist psychology, right? Buddhist sort of science of mind, is immense help to modern scientists. And then also, you know, the brain specialist and uh, the scientist about health. Now in these two fields, more and more scientists now really showing genuine interest for medical science, for healthy body. Healthy mind is very, very essential. Too much stress here, too much worry, or anger, hatred is actually eating our immune system. Other hand, more compassionate mind or sense of concern of others' well-being. That develop, that brings self-confidence. That creates inner strength, optimism. So that is very, very important for physical health. Then brain specialist. Now their knowledge about brain I think, uh, every, I think every year, you see, they uh, developing, progressing. But still, there are a lot of mysterious things there. So then they begin to, sh begin to show interest, the emotions. There's very clear link, brain movement, 
and emotions. Sometimes, first, some sort of movement in the brain, and then certain emotions come. Sometimes, just one thought comes and effect on the brain. That's now obvious. The in America, Wisconsin University, then Emory University, the Stanford University, and then some other university. Uh, in India also, some university. They actually, you see, they found uh, through training of mind, or through sort of also the certain train, uh, training and also uh, mindfulness. You see, this actually you see change the brain plus kasa. Kasa six no. Plus kasa plus six. Ah. What word called? Oh, that one. That word I I can't pronounce. <laughs> so actually now they saw that you see through training of mind you see actually some effect on our brain it actually now happened so therefore the brain specialist like Richard Davidson uh, well known scientist neuroscientist, uh, 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 he he, after he carried some sort of or say the, uh, experiment and also some other university which I mentioned, this actually is the last, I think, few years, they actually carry some experiment, carry some project as an experiment. The result is quite concrete. So therefore, uh, initially, say when I sort of uh, I developed desire. Now the study of modern science in our uh, monastic institution. Uh, at the beginning, the elder scholars a little bit reservation. <laughs> then. Uh, uh, we discuss so, uh, from time to time uh, the necessity study modern science in our monastic academic field. Uh, then since I think last seven years, six, se six, seven years, we already started selected student, mainly monk student and some nuns also. You see, they study about science. Now, this year, now we formally sort of decided now lesson of science must include in our curriculum, uh, uh, part, of the, uh, part of the curriculum. So we formally decided. Uh, so therefore, that's sort of the, sort of the stage of uh, progress like that. Uh, now I think implication. Two, two, th two things. Mm. One, sort of the entirely academic uh, knowledge right. concerned about academic and knowledge. Uh, modern science uh, of course come from West. So modern science is very much I say they, uh, sort of very much sort of involved as I mentioned earlier physical physical world, external external things. Uh, so obviously day by day we experience the feeling 
experience. Uh, these feelings, experience, views cannot explain thoroughly, 100% by uh, neurons where uh, brains are movement. You can, you can learn some broad but detail very difficult to explain. One time I think about I think uh, at the beginning of this Mayas sort of dialogue with some scientist. Uh, there's some scientist is trying to know human brain uh, out of sort of observation of birds or animals or what's the movement. And I felt, wow, well, yeah, our brain is something much, much more sophisticated than animal brain. So trying to know human mind, examine on birds' brain, <laughs> that's quite, that's quite amazing. <laughs> uh, so then, uh, it gradually, you see scientists, uh, out of dialogue with scientists, then they really, very much sort of the uh, sort of interested about you see, the information about a variety of thought and the system of the emotions. So uh, they are very, very eager uh, bring more information about different variety of thought or emotion and how to deal with this emotion. So now, uh, uh, some university, as I mentioned earlier, already you see carry some uh, project. And then also you see, uh, with RCD, I mean, late Verala, great scientist, Chilean, great scientist, uh, and myself, you see, we start one small, or should they, Kareda, uh, uh, group uh, that we call Minor Life. Uh, so now, year by year, you see, that this organization really now uh, becoming quite popular in America. Just about three weeks ago, where I think about, I think about two weeks ago, I think uh, we decided now you see these activities should because of the, uh, expand Europe and Asia and uh, India and some other, and possibly Japan, Taiwan, like that. Uh, we already decided. So that's the. Uh, academic field. Now another field. Uh, 20th century. I mean, since uh, science developed, uh, uh, usually sometimes I used to telling this way. Uh, last uh, over three, four thousand years. You see, people, whenever we face some problem, we always pray to God or to mysterious force. <laughs> but then about 200 years, science and technology develop. Then technology brings immediately what we want. <laughs> Last three, four thousand years, you see, we only pray, not very sure whether the goal which we want materialized or not through prayer, not very sure. <laughs> but science and technology immediately bring result. 
So therefore, logically, you see, people pay more attention about science and technology rather than religious or see, prayer. Religious prayer, I think every religion now gradually become like ritual or fashion, uh, like that. Uh, not much serious, isn't it? Uh, so that's the situation. Uh, but, but look, science, technology, wonderful in invention. Uh, original sort of people who create these things, really good intention. Maybe some personal sort of curiosity, but basically good intention. But then, look, 20th century, according to some historian, around 200 million of people killed through violence. Although war, violence is part of human history, but the destruction is much increased because of the technology including nuclear weapon. You Japanese brothers, sisters, actually suffer from nuclear atom bomb. Hiroshima, Nagasaki. Terrible. So this technology or the science is something wrong? No, certainly not. Then question is, Question, the question or answer is the user of science and technology, these marvelous inventions where innovation where innovation used for destructive. So nuclear weapon itself, nothing wrong. But we use this for destruction. So that related with here. Our mind. So therefore, uh, the 20th century, I usually call, 20th century becomes century of violence, century of bloodshed. All the other part, a lot of innovation, a lot of development in the 20th century, last century. I think most important century of human history. But unfortunately, unfortunately that century also becomes century of bloodshed, century of fear. I also, you see, have some experience. When the East German and West Germany, you see there, East Germany, West Germany divided, and Berlin also divided, you see, few occasion, I think one occasion, at least one occasion, I have been very border, the West Ber uh, West German, West Germany's border. I mean, the, uh, so when I sleep night, little <laughs> concern or little fear. <laughs> if something something happened, then the weapons, Warsaw Pact's weapon, uh, including some tactical nuclear weapon, ready to shoot to the West. West Germany. <laughs> so if something happened, then I may survive or may not <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> See, that guy was sort of fear, really. Then those German people on the border, or not only border, the whole Europe, is, remain constant fear. It's a human negative emotion, thousand years there. But this wonderful sort of technology, these things become disposal of negative emotion. So therefore, uh, now this 21st century, I think the later part of 20th century, I think people really fed up about violence. Like now, 
uh, now even today, I think Syria, how many innocent people killed without a purpose? Really, lack of, I say, the sense of concern of well-being of other or respect of others' life. Now it's quite clear, and global economy crisis, the ecology crisis, family problem. I think in Japan, uh, I heard. I, I was told, you see, a lot of sort of suicide cases. I think first Sweden. I think Sweden, the social social welfare, what what called social welfare, is concerned, very good. But the suicide rate quite high. Then Japan. Uh, why? Too much negative emotion. Ang anger, uh, that anger, uh, sometimes anger himself or herself, and suicide. So that now, uh, so, so therefore, now we are really facing uh, problems. Uh, so these, these problems can solve through technology, through science alone. No, certainly not. As I mentioned earlier, uh, more technology, more destructive, powerful, more suffering. So now, some kind of controller of these, I say, the scientific knowledge or technology, turn for constructive, is so ultimately related here. So therefore. Uh, that's one purpose. Now, time come. We must make more effort to make awareness about human compassion, which is all major religious traditions, or say the main message, main practice. Uh, so, uh, all major religious traditions have, I think, great potential. So, the secondly, uh, there are a large number of non-believers also there. I think recently I was, I, I saw one article on a on, on newspaper in America. Uh, it mentioned about 30% of Americans uh, not much interest about religion. Uh, uh, so therefore, you see, we need some way, uh, some method to applicable, right? applicable to those non-believers. So I usually say the uh, secular ethics. Now here, the backbone of secular ethics is scientific finding. Warm-heartedness, healthy mind, healthy body. Healthy, with healthy mind, healthy family, healthy society, uh, eventually healthy humanity. So, so therefore, the, our scientific research, another responsibility is uh, uh, to educate people through scientific basis, uh, on, on the scientific basis, uh, the warm-heartedness is very useful for your own deadliest as of the life, including your physical health. So that's the now two purpose our sort of dialogue. One, simply extend our knowledge in the economy field. And second, uh, out of our knowledge, how to educate people, how, uh, how to transform our society, more compassionate society. So that's the main purpose. So now that's all, I think, too long. Thank you.
ダライラマ法王によるオープニングスピーチでした法王が積極的に科学者との対話を続けられる意味がよく分かりましたどうもありがとうございました